Welcome, fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, including today's video, which is, yes, a book-themed video, but it isn't just any book-themed video. No, 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 it is a vintage horror book haul! Also, vintage middle grade and vintage adult horror, so both things represented here. Uh, uh, sorry for screaming, but I'm just so excited, guys, to show you some of the books I bought while on vacation. All these books came from Powell's Bookstore in Portland, Oregon. So without further ado, let's get to the short intro so we can come back sooner and go through these freaking books! Welcome back, guys. Okay, let's dig into the vintage books. As I said in the intro, we are going to have vintage adult horror and old school middle grade spooky books slash, I guess you could call them horror books. So without further ado, let's get to the first book. First up, The Frankenstein Papers by Fred Saber Hagen. I should have looked at the name before I started to say it. So this was published in 1994 in terms of this actual edition. The original edition, the first edition, was published in 1986. And I actually saw another edition of this available at Powell's, but I didn't know they shipped when I was shopping, so I had to put some things back. So had I known that they did ship, I could have bought everything I wanted. But alas, I only bought this copy of the Frankenstein papers. This is the more horror looking copy. The other one looked a little bit more sci-fi. And as I said, this is a tour edition. As you could see here, the tour logo. Next up, Lizzie Borden by Elizabeth Engstrom. And I haven't read anything by her, but she does have a lot of books that are like paperbacks from Hell Table Books. And a lot of people speak highly of her writing. So I have got to finally eventually check out some of her work for sure. This was super affordable. So this was published in 1992, originally published in 1991. And yes, very excited to have this one. This is another, as you can see, tour book. This book is not super vintage -y. I think it's from the 2000s or something. Let's see. This is from... Where are you? 2008. So yes, not that old. However, the contents of this sound like so much fun. I could literally spend all day looking at the different lists in this. So this is the book of lists and horror edition. So it's a lot of fun. I, I flipped through when I saw it. I flipped through when it was finally delivered after it was shipped to my house. And I'm like, wow, it'd be fun to do a whole reading vlog on some of these lists. Because not only do they have lists of like horror movies in here, they also have lists of horror books. And I'll give you an example. Hold on. So here we have Nancy Holder's 13 movies she wishes she'd never watch because they are too scary, but continues to repeatedly watch them anyway. So stuff like that. And then there's more. Mitch Bryan's 10 Favorite Disguised Horror Films. This book is filled with just random lists like that. And I love that. I love that. Bentley Little's 10 Horror One-Hit Wonders that everyone should read. And just to give you guys an idea, The Auctioneer is on the list, Burnt Offerings, The Cook, all of which are on my to-read list, by the way. The Auctioneer I'm hoping to get to literally before the end of the year. Also, by the way, he has Falling Angel on his list by William... Hortisburg? I never know if I say that right, but I did read that book and it is a great book. I just watched the movie adaptation called Angel Heart, which was not as good as the book, but still kind of wild and crazy. There was an absurd sex scene that made me like laugh out loud because it was like, it was kind of stupid. Anyway, there are more than just that on this list. There's a lot of good 
books listed on that list. So again, it's not just movies, it's books too, and that's what I think makes this very unique is that it's like a whole bunch of just lists, and I love it, and I could read this like all day long. And so I'm definitely going to check this out next year and try to do some thematic videos around some of these lists. I think that would be so much fun, whether it's movies or books. Yes, I'm just so happy to own this, even though it's not that old. I just like books like this quite a bit. I love lists. I like making lists. I like reading lists. I'm... I'm a list person, I guess. I, I'm definitely a list maker, but I will read anybody's list about anything or watch a video of a top 10, top 5, whatever. Lists, yes. Two words. Jurassic Shark. <laughs> That's supposed to be a fin, I guess? Anyway, <laughs> whatever. A dorsal fin. Uh, so this is Meg, and I'm really excited to have found a hardcover copy of this. This is by Steve Alton, and I've heard good things about the book. I have seen the movie, but I've heard the books a lot better, and so I cannot wait to read this next summer. So I'm kind of one of those people who do like, I, I do like to read seasonally, whether that is, you know, summer books in summer, you know, wintry books in winter. Sometimes I'll break out of that. Like, I did read a Christmas set, not Christmas, a winter set horror book in July, and I really loved it, but I hardly ever do that. I try not to do it, but I will do it if I'm really intrigued and don't want to wait. But yeah, this will be perfect for next summer for sure. And yeah, it's about a big-ass shark, as you might have guessed. And I've just heard good things, as I said, about the story. So this was originally published in 1997. This is a book I've seen around before online. Like, I could have gotten a copy for cheap on Pango Books. I don't know what stopped me from getting it. I guess I assumed I would just see it in person. And this price was really affordable. It was only like five bucks, so I was like, what the hell? And I could see it right in front of me, so I know what it looks like. I don't have to guess the condition it'll come in. So this is Great Irish Tales of Horror, edited, introduced by Peter Hanning, A Treasury of Fear. So I just love Irish culture. I really do. I love St. Patrick's Day. I love Irish music in terms of some of my favorite music ever, like ever, is Celtic punk. I love Celtic punk. So some of my favorite bands, Dropkick Murphys, Flogging Molly, I love them so much. So here is the creepy cover. Really, really like it. And this was published by Souvenir Press in 1995. Here is the last adult horror book from this haul. This is Still Dead, and this is edited by John Skip and Craig Spector, and they're very, very high up on my list next year for reading a book by both of them because they're like splatterpunk legends, and I've heard great things about their books. Very eager to get to it, so this is actually a first edition, and it was originally published in, do, 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 I believe... 1992. And also it's got artwork done by Rick Berry. And let me just show you the inside when I take off the dust jacket, what the actual hardcover looks like. So isn't this cool? It's kind of shiny with my light, but it says still dead. And it's got like a skull and crossbones here. And the spine looks lovely as well with the same skull and crossbones. It's kind of hard to see it with the light coming into the window. It's different stories by different authors. Again, it's collected by Skip Inspector, and they do have a story in here, but so do people like Dan Simmons, Elizabeth Massey, Kathy Koja, Poppy C. Bright. So yes, very exciting Douglas E. Winter, and I believe all of these are zombie stories, which my friend Kat would love this book, but I just think it's going to be like splattery type of stories. Let's show you one of the paintings here. Here's the back of the dust jacket. Show you the front again. Look at that creepy painting. The dead are restless, again. In 1968, George Romero unleashed upon an innocent public a horde of flesh-eating zombies in his drive-in classic, Night of the Living Dead. Gritty and shocking, bleak, and incredibly real, Romero's film changed the cinematic face of horror forever. The Universal and AIP and Hammer excursions into the dark side seemed positively quaint in comparison, and Romero's undead ate ate the quaint for lunch. Similarly, in 1989, writers John Skip and Craig Spector published Book of the Dead, a collection of stories inspired and drawing upon the theme of Romero's movie. Released at a time when quiet horror was popular, 
skip Inspector Zombies, well, eat the quiet for supper. Now for dessert. Still Dead is a blood-chilling return to the world of Night of the Living Dead, featuring 19 original stories by such masters as Dan Simmons, Kathy Koja, K.W. Jeter, and Nancy A. Collins, among others. This is a book to be read with the lights on and the doors locked, because the dead are back and they're still hungry. All right, let's go through the middle grade reads. First up, Camp Haunted Hills, How I Survived My Summer Vacation. You could see this ghostly apparition. Let's get a closer look without the glare. Look at the 90s pants. Hell yeah. Look at this. This is so 90s. You can't honestly get more 90s than this. I feel like I had a pair of pants like that shorter than these when I was a little girl. So that's pretty cool. This was published in 1988. This is a minstrel book, and as you could see, this is volume number one of the series, Camp Haunted Hills. And I forgot to say, yes, it's by Bruce Coville. Next up, I found a first printing of a Fear Street book, Runaway. There's nowhere to hide. I love, love the taglines of Fear Street books. So I didn't already have this one. I'm missing quite a lot of Fear Street books and they're very hard to find in the wild. So did I grab it even though it has a big crease? Yes. I know that the crease sucks, but whatever. When I saw this cover, I needed this book. This is Terror Under the Tent and it's by Mary Anderson. And just look at this. Look at this fortune teller guy. Amazing. Got a crystal ball. Looks like it's predicting sports stuff. We've got two little kids. Heck yeah. Next up, although I do not have book one, and as you can see at the top here, it says book two. I didn't care. I still wanted this very badly. This is The Darkest Wish, Lorna's Wish. And the cover is fantastic. You can't beat these old school middle grade covers. You really can't. Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Of course, this is Halloween themed and I had to get it. Halloween Echo. Look at this cute cover. Heck yes. Oh, look at the little pail. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Two Weird Zone books. I'm very excited about this. So here we have number three and number five. And both of the covers are indeed weird, hence the name Weird Zone. The covers totally capture the name of the series, I think. So the first one, number three, is The Beast from Beneath the Cafeteria, and number five is The Brain That Wouldn't Obey. And let me give you guys a closer look. Both of these are by Tony Abbott. I guess that is the cafeteria dude, the monster. The beast, to be precise, I guess. Uh, I love when kids don't exactly look scared, but they're supposed to be frightened on the cover. This kid's just like, oh, I guess I'm scared. Look, it's a monster. She's like, oh. I don't know. I just love that. I love that so much. Even the kids in the background aren't that scared. This girl's falling over here and she's just like, Wee! she's not even that frightened. Like, what the hell, guys? The floor is coming up. It's something from hell. What's going on? All right, and as promised, here's a close-up of the brain that wouldn't obey, and uh, no wonder it won't obey. Look how freaking crazy and insane this brain looks. This brain ain't obeying nobody. This brain is out for himself. He also has these weird-looking pustule thing. What the, what the hell? It looks like meatloaf versus a brain, so I don't know. Anyway, there's these green vine arm tendrils. Again, kids that are supposed to be scared, I guess, but they're not. He's just like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but I don't think he really minds that the brain is right in front of him. So I don't know. This is also more like a brain, but this part's like a meatloaf. So I don't know what's going on there, but I'm intrigued, to be honest. Very intrigued. See the largest brain ever. Hear the potato chant. Okay, so it's a potato. Okay, that's the potato. No wonder it looked weird. <laughs> so weird. Here we have a first printing from 1993. I love this. I love this. This is Shadow Zone. Guess who's dating a werewolf? I'm guessing one of these girls. That is my guess. <laughs> anyway, more awesome old school clothing. Oh, I like this sweater. I would totally wear this. And I wish jean jackets would fit me this good because mine always look big in the shoulders. Anyway, I just put on a jean jacket today and I changed out of it because I didn't like it. Look at these fantastic green hands reaching up to the sky. This is by J.R. Black. The werewolf looks kind of friendly, but also he kind of looks frightened himself. He's like, eh, 
I don't know. I guess I'm a werewolf. Oh! Angie's in for the fright of her life. They should have come up with something more, f like, clever in my opinion. Something to do with dating and... Dating is hairier than she imagined it would be. I don't you know what I mean? Like, it's a werewolf, hairy, whatever. That's dumb. <sighs> Here, we have a Spine Tinglers book that I didn't have, and I could add this to my collection now. I have quite a few. This is Student Exchange by M.T. Coffin. Get it? M.T. M.T. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, this is number 22 of the series, and it's like a dinosaur guy. A dinosaur kid, dude. Here we've got Frightmares, Desert Danger, and this is a first printing from 1995. On the back we see Kidnapped. That's kind of scary, the idea of this little girl's being kidnapped. This is by Peg Carrot. This was published in 1995, and the cover is incredible. So we will look closely in a second. Here we've got a Van Gogh. And I'll show you some other details, but this is Tales of the Gross and Gruesome. And look, she's just like, what is? And he's like, I'm hungry. Yet does he not feel this hand coming up behind him to reach into the popcorn bowl? It's Van Gogh's hand. It looks like a monster. Here we've got like a giant ant. Here we've got a disgusting looking cockroach. Like a snake. Actually, more than one snake here. We've got an old school tube TV. Yes. Creepy, like... I don't know what this thing is. Creepy thing there. Love it. I just love it. And there's like a shadow of a Grim Reaper there. So this cover is legit fantastic. If you like your stories sick and scary, you'll love Tales of the Gross and Gruesome. These revolting horror stories are guaranteed to make your teeth chatter and your flesh crawl. Next up, the creme de la creme of the entire haul. And this is last, so I saved the best for last. So I'm very excited to have found these. These are monster editions of Goosebumps. So here we've got monster edition number one and number two. Now... I was told by a friend who knows about Goosebumps, more than I do, that these are actually supposed to scream and make noise when you open the covers. However, these do not. Does that make me disappointed? Not really, because I'm happy to just have found these. These are going to look great together sitting on a shelf when I finally get my library completely in order and have all my collections the way I want in terms of the display of everything, the way everything's laid out and displayed. So I will show you a close-up of the actual editions. And before I decided to keep these for myself, I did double check to make sure that my friend Cameron had these already. And he did. If he didn't, I would have given them to him gladly. However, I'm sure his copies are in much better condition and that at least one, if not both, actually scream for him. So let's look at number one. Open this book if you dare. It's a real scream. And it actually does scream when you open it. So, marvelous. Very bright here. I love it. And this was super affordable. I'm sure, you know, it's not in the best condition, but I'm sure online these go for a little bit. I haven't really looked into it, but this was printed in 1995. And this is a bind up of three different Goosebump books and stories together. So Welcome to Dead House, Stay Out of the Basement, and Say Cheese and Die. Of course, I have all of these already in single books, in single editions. That's fine. I just wanted this because of the cool bind up, the d cool cover. And I really love the spine as well, just to show you one more time. It's the same design as on the cover, but it just is wonderful. It just looks so great like that. Next up, a close up of number two. We can see Slappy here. And it says here, Reader beware, touch Slappy's mouth if you dare. It's a real lightmare. So this one's supposed to light up, not scream. And he doesn't light up. I'm just making sure. <gasps> he does! What the hell? He does! I thought he screamed too, so I didn't check. I didn't even... What the hell? Okay, so that one worked. Let me just double check this doesn't scream. No, it doesn't scream. So this one really doesn't scream, but this one lights up. What the hell? That is amazing. All right, so this was published in 1996, and this is a bind up of all of the Living Dummy stories. So Night of the Living Dummy, Night of the Living Dummy 2, Night of the Living Dummy 3. And again, I have, I think I have all three of them in single editions. I know I have one and two for sure. 
if not one, two, and three. But it's nice just to have the bind up, and I, I can't even believe it. What the frick? I'm like flabbergasted. You guys are seeing like a true reaction right now. I honestly didn't know it worked. I thought it didn't work. Anyway, here is the lovely spine. Awesome, awesome. Again, not in the best condition. There's like a big sticker on the inside. I don't know if this sticker's supposed to be there. It almost looks like it is. It's a goosebump sticker. But you could hear the spine kind of, it almost sounds like it's not like very sturdy. So I'm going to be very, very careful with these. Look at that fantastic illustration of Slappy there. Very cool. It's like the cover of the book, of the actual single edition book. Standalone edition, I should say. Let me just see what other... Yeah, so here's the other cover illustration. Very cool. I'm trying not to bend it too much. Trying to be very gentle here, but awesome! So here is my favorite finds, but I really like all the books, and including a surprise that I like so much, the book of lists. Anyway, guys, for my haul, for the stuff I'm keeping, that is it for me. Did you guys like any of these? Do you own any of these already? Like, what is your favorite cover? Leave any of that in the comments below. I love hearing people's opinions on the books I haul. It's so much fun to haul and buy books. I'm addicted. I know I'm addicted. It's, it's a terrible thing to be addicted to buying not only books, but like almost everything in in the world, like Halloween decorations, posters, freaking even socks. I've like been going crazy buying socks lately. Cups, mugs, whatever. I have a problem. But hey, I'm not complaining because I like all the stuff I own quite a bit. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed seeing all those goodies. For this time though, that is it for me. Till next time, you guys know what you can do. Keep on killing it. Bye guys.